How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're gonna take a look at solubility and saturated solutions. So our objectives will be to describe solutions as being unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated, and explain what the differences between these conditions are. We also wanna be able to use solubility curves, I'm sorry, solubility curves, to describe the solutions in terms of saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated. Let's get into it. Solubility, All right? We know solubility describes how much stuff can dissolve in a certain amount of solvent. So here I got some salt, I'm adding it to some water, I'm mixing it up, and a certain amount of it's going to dissolve. If we change the temperature, we change the pressure, we change how much solvent we use, we're going to change the solubility, right? So we got to account for those things. If we created a solution where the maximum amount that can dissolve has been dissolved, we call that a saturated solution. It's dissolved as much as it can. And one of the characteristic features is that, hey, there's extra solute at the bottom that is undissolved. So that tells us that the solution above it has dissolved everything it can. It's a saturated solution. So in saturated solutions, a dynamic equilibrium exists, right? So the extra solid is sitting at the bottom, but some of it will dissolve, right? At the same rate that some of it precipitates out. So the rate of dissolving equals the rate of precipitating. So uh, overall, there may be no change, but this process is still going on, right? It's kind of like you're running on a treadmill. The treadmill's moving backwards, but you're running forwards. Overall, you're not going anywhere, but you're still there's still changes going on. All right, so solubility. Uh, if we create a solution where you dissolve more sol, I'm sorry. If you create a solution where you could still dissolve more solute, it's an unsaturated solution. So if as I'm pouring in, I cut it off right there and I stir it up and all of it dissolves and there's no solid sitting at the bottom, that tells me that I can still add more solute to it. It's unsaturated. If I somehow trick the solution into dissolving more than it should be able to, we call that super saturated solution, right? Super more than. So super saturated, it's more than saturated. Mm -hmm. uh, how can, you, how can that be? How can that happen? Well, sometimes if you take a solution that has that's uh, saturated and you heat it up, it's able to dissolve more stuff. So here I have a saturated solution with a whole bunch of undissolved, uh, in this example, sodium acetate. So if I add some more heat, it's gonna increase the solubility. It may dissolve all of that extra solid. And then if I let it cool really slowly, undisturbed, uh, the solute particles kind of get stuck in being dissolved, like they forget that they're supposed to stop hanging out with the solvent and crystallize. And if you add a crystal or disturb the solution, that might be enough to unstick uh, the solute particles and you'll get them all crystallizing and precipitating out. So this is a quick little video oh, that I made of that going on. So here I am a super saturated solution that I created by heating it up and cooling it and didn't disturb it. Now I add a few salt crystals and you can see all that extra solute lights. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to crystallize. I'm gonna go do that now. And then it all precipitates out at once, which is pretty cool. All right, solubility curves. Solubility curves show saturation lines and how they change with temperature. So if you take a look at this one from the New York State reference tables, for chemistry, you see it specifies, hey, this is how many grams of solute can dissolve in 100 grams of water. You need to specify how much solvent you're working with. All right? If we're looking at the line itself, that's where it is saturated. So if I'm focusing on KNO3 and this line right there, that line is where a satur saturated solution exists. If you're above the line, that means somehow you've dissolved more solute than you should be able to. That is going to be super saturated. And below the line means that you can still dissolve more solute, which means it's unsaturated. So above the line, super saturated, below the line, sat unsaturated, right on the line, saturated. All right, so how to use this? You gotta note the units, right? We already said it's grams of solute per 100 grams of water. If we're using twice as much water, 200 grams of water, then you can dissolve twice as much solute. And if you're using half as much water, you can only dissolve half as much solute. So here's an example. Describe the solution in terms of saturation that is made from dissolving. 85 grams of KNO3 and 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius. All right, so we go, hey, I'm using 100 grams of water, so I don't have to worry about that. It's the same units as the chart. Um, 85 grams, I go, all right, well, here's 80, here's 90, 85 is right there at 40 degrees Celsius. So I follow this 40 degrees Celsius line, 85 degrees is right here. 
here's the line for KNO3, and I see that I am above that line. So that tells me that I'm super saturated. I've created a super saturated solution. All right, what if I had 40 grams of NaCl and 200 grams of water at 90 degrees Celsius? Well, I need to account for the fact that I have 40 grams of my solute and 200 grams of water. I wanna know, well, how many grams would that be if instead I used 100 grams, right? So here it's the same as dissolving 20 grams of water or 20 grams of solute in 100 grams of water. So all right, 20 grams at 90 degrees Celsius is this point right here. Where does that compare to the sodium chloride line? It's underneath it. So that tells me that it is unsaturated. All right, and then uh, last example, if I had 120 grams of NaNO3 and 50 grams of water at 30 degrees, well, wait a minute. If I had 50 grams of water dissolved, uh, 120 grams, if instead it was 100 grams of water, it would have to be twice, la twice that. So it'd be 240 grams, which is like way off the charts, way up there. And at 30 degrees Celsius, it's gonna be way up here. Where is that point compared to NaNO3? It's way above it. It's gonna be super saturated. Another example, a saturated solution is created by dissolving 60 grams of NH4Cl in water uh, should specify how much water, let's say 100 grams of water, and heating it until all of it dissolves. The solution is then cooled to 30 degrees Celsius. How much precipitate is formed? All right, well, it's saying that originally we dissolved 60 grams, but then we cooled it to 30 degrees Celsius. So we were right here, but where's the line for NH4Cl? Here it is. So NH4Cl at 30 degrees should only be able to dissolve, I don't know, that looks like maybe 43 grams. But we had 60 grams in there. So how much precipitated out? Well, 60 grams minus 43 gives me 17 grams. So 17 grams of that salt will have precipitated out and is sitting at the bottom as a solid. All right, so summarize. Can you describe solutions as being unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? And Describe the differences between those conditions. And can you use solubility curves to describe a solution in terms of saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated? I hope so. I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.